Hello, everybody. I'm here with Miki Mistrati, the director of the Chocolate War documentary. Hello, Miki. Uh, we're really glad that you're here with us today. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for being part of this. I'm I'm really um, honored about that. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to talk to you about your documentary. First of all, I want to just give some information about Mickey. Uh, he was born in Copenhagen in, in 1968. Since 1996, he has directed, produced, and exec produced more than 85 films for the Danish and international market. He's behind films like The Dark Side of Chocolate, Shady Chocolate, Starbucks, and Nespresso, The Truth About Your Coffee, Cadbury Exposed, Dating Dangerous Secrets, Face to Face with Bounty Hunters, Abused by the Police, and Inside the Real Saudi Arabia. Uh, do you want to add anything else to these information? No, I think that's quite, uh, that That would be enough for now, yeah. That's okay. nice. Okay, great. Uh, Miki, I just, uh, first of all, I want to talk about how did you decide to tell the story? How did you, and how did your path cross with Harry Collingsworth, uh, can you tell tell us about that? Yeah, I, I need to go a little bit more back because um, the way I went into this um, uh, issue about child labor in the chocolate production actually started in in 2007. Um, I was, as a consumer, I was at my local supermarket to buy um, a chocolate bar. And in the supermarket on the shelves, there were like seven chocolate bars, uh, same brand, same uh, chocolate, but different flavor. What, one of the chocolate bar had a fair trade mark. It was a label with fair trade. And I was, as a consumer, just wondering, okay, if one is um, fair trade, what about the six others? Are they unfair trade? So that was actually my first beginning of investigating about chocolate. At that point, I didn't know anything about chocolate and the industry. So at that time, uh, back in time, um, no one was really care about child labor and trafficking of children in chocolate industry. So I made my first film in 2000 and, and it went out in 2009, um, The Dark Side of Chocolate. Then further on, um, I continue my my investigation into this because as a person, as a journalist, I'm really um, surprised that we have a, a product in our world, chocolate, and we are eating it um, daily um, and it's made by child labor. And, and I, I, I do not understand why this is an issue in 2022. Um, so I continued my uh, my work and through uh, more research, because I had never left this uh, area, I ran into uh, Terry Conningsworth, who is a um, human rights lawyer in the States. And ironically, he was, he was doing more or less the same as I was doing, but from a legal point of view, so we had this parallel where he was doing it. I did my journalism, and he did his law, uh, and 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 um, and trying to get uh, uh, the companies to um, to get um, to prove that the companies are using child labor illegally in 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 the production. So I just reached out to him and asked him if I could follow his track. And that was in 2016. And then we made this film. It's, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a really effective. And I think it's a very impactful film, by the way. So can you tell us about the preparation process? I mean, you just flew to another country in an unknown uh, area where you were ex exploring this child labor issue. And also it was a little bit dangerous too, because nobody wanted you there. That nobody wanted you to, you know, poke your nose to this issue and to just uh, talk about this issue as a lawyer or a journalist. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, the thing is, um, I have been traveling in lots of countries um, and also um, in Africa uh, to dig into a such a big business as uh, cocoa and chocolate. Um, most of it is in West Africa. 
in Ivory Coast and Ghana. Those two countries together produce uh, almost uh, 70%, 70% of all cocoa. So it's a massive industry. Um, so when you go into countries like Ivory Coast and Ghana, you need to have some really good local journalist fixers who can help you out. And I met one in Ivory Coast who has been my friend since. He, um, he's part of, of, of uh, the latest film um, and he works um, for Reuters uh, in Abidjan in Ivory Coast. And without him, I wouldn't be able to do anything because you need to work very close with local yeah. uh, people do this. And I know that he has been working and been really um, um, critic about the chocolate industry in his own country, but it's difficult for him to get it out in a in a broader um, scale. So the cooperation between me and Ange Aboa has been like fantastic. Um, and, and you need to do that. You, it's not just me as a director, could, you can do this. I'm used to work with local people and in each countries and 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 now they're just by friends around the world. So so my preparation goes through uh, local people um, who knows the country from the inside and know all the the boogie traps and and where not to go and when to do things because otherwise you will get in trouble when you are working in an industry like this and beware. When I did my first film in Ivory Coast, just a few years before a uh, French-Canadian journalist, he disappeared, Guy André Kiefer, um, and no one still this day, and may he rest in peace, um, knows where he is. He disappeared in 2006 um, in Abidjan, in um, Ivory Coast, and because he was digging into uh, this industry. So I know that from 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 history that you need to be careful and i have been arrested um in in uh, in an ivory coast uh so and and i also been in a hold back in in a hold up in in mali uh by local militias um but because i worked closely with local people you know it's much easier to get yeah. Uh, of a situation but yes it is dangerous to work at that field only because it's a lot of money we're talking about billions of dollars um industry so so you really need to be careful about what you do and not be stupid and listening to local people who knows the law who knows the let's say all the the back doors out and how to to act in 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 certain situations yeah exactly and we can see in the documentary people who will watch will see that uh, there are threats uh, that you're faced with and when people learn that you're there and you're investigating about this child labor issue in chocolate industry uh, they start to, to follow you and they start to, to make make you feel threatened so you can go back and just stop dealing with it but i mean it's 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 an extra extraordinary uh journey in a way and i'm i'm really uh, curious about how this um journey also changed you when you're directing chocolate war and when you're having experiences because we also see in a documentary you go there you go you go and see these children who are working there who are child laborers so uh can you tell us also about that how this experience affected yeah. you and changed the way maybe you work in a way i don't know can you tell us it my work um in the chocolate industry has changed me uh for good that's yeah. that's 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 just not a discussion point anymore i think um the way it changed me is that I have a life mission now and have had for a couple of like a decade now, uh, but especially on, on, on this film, because, you know, my, my thing is children are the most vulnerable we have. Yeah. 
they don't have any voice in itself. Yeah, of course they can they can complain, but no one will listening to children. Children need a voice. They need an ambassador to be able to tell the problem they are facing on a daily basis. And we are talking about 1.6 million children who illegally work in the chocolate industry in West Africa. This is not just my figures. This is official yeah. estimates of the, the amount of child labor. It's human rights violation against children. And it's, it's devastating that this is a problem in 2022. I have now chosen this to be my mission. I want to end child labor in the chocolate industry. And I'm not stopping before the last child is not in a cocoa field, but in school. We are talking about fundamentally things in life. Children shouldn't go to work. They should be in school because if they're not going to school, they will end up in poverty rest of their life. And we need to give this opportunity to any children of the world that they can go to school, at least basic school, and so they don't end up in in child um, uh, labor, child slavery in, in some of the uh, situation. Because in my latest film, we have one who is a child slave. He comes from Burkina Faso and works in a plantation more than a thousand kilometers from home. And he doesn't even know how he uh, ended up there and, 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 and how long he's been there. It's just like devastating. How can we as human beings from a rich part of the world be being um, viewing this, watching this as it was just, well, yeah, poverty is just a part of the world. We, we just need to, you know, yeah. accept it. No, I'm not going to accept this. I will make the pressure on the on on the uh, chocolate companies for rest of my life, and this is a promise I gave myself and the chocolate industry: fix it, make it sustainable for the cocoa farmers. At the end of the day, we talk about that the, it's complex industry. No, it's not complex. Do you know what it is? It is you pay a decent amount of money to the farmers for the work they do so they are not forced to use child labor in the supply chain. Full stop. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I also wanted to ask you after you explain this, uh, there are two points of view, I guess, from the production point of view and from the consumer point of view. Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask you about the production point of view. I think the most fundamental thing is law and implementing that law in the right way. So uh, I hope uh, there will be more effective laws uh, in the following years that protect child from laboring in this field. So can you tell us about that a little bit? I guess there's a new law, EU law that uh, yeah. yeah, forced labor to supply chain. So can you tell us about that a little bit? Uh, is there a law yeah, coming think... that can affect this situation completely in a good way? I think the most positive things I've been seeing the last couple of years is, um, I think a, a month ago, the EU Commission, the president uh, did her statement. And one of the points she, um, she was uh, pointing at was um, they want to implement uh, implementation of a law into the EU, EU countries where it's you can't allow to import anything into the uh, uh, to the EU market if it's produced by forced labor that mm -hmm. contains of course child labor in the chocolate industry so I was quite um, happy when I saw yeah. this suggestion of this law that would be part of EU's um, each country's um, I guess within the next couple of years maybe a year some countries like Germany are really like strong on this and I've already been in touch with some some high level prosecutors uh, from Germany, and they are asking questions about this because they know that 
the, the law enforcement around this needs to be right. And I think that's the backside of it, how each mm-hmm. country will make sure that this uh, company are um, uh, not using any cocoa which is produced by child labor. How do they prove that? And do the law enforcement have the tools to actually do the investigation? And also, do they have the not only the power, but also the will to do it right? Because yeah. otherwise, I would say, just call me and I would do, I will help out with all the investigation um, <laughs> because you, you have the yeah. right knowledge to do it. But I think it's, 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 it's a step in the right direction um for uh, for EU I I'm, I'm really happy about it I was actually um so happy that I I I, I told everybody about this law and and it will be part hopefully for all the EU countries within a year or two yeah hopefully and this can this can change a lot of things and like i said before i think uh, implementing the law in the right way is really important and also i think what you're doing is really important i mean there are two sides two sides of the two sides of this if there was no journalism maybe we couldn't come to this point where the right laws uh, were being talked about i mean the journalism the news is really important because we can just spread it out and internationally worldwide and uh, make people be aware of the this situation so i think it's really important and can, do you want to say anything about that i mean do you want to talk about the right kind of journalism maybe because you've been doing that for a long yeah, I years think, uh, i think when i started my investigation i I thought that journalism was the way to change the world. I just realized that's not going to happen because uh, the only way you can change anything in the world, journalism is just a tool to 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 give the general public some information they didn't have. I do all the research and give them information. I think at the end of the day, the one who can make the changes is you and me as individuals. If I think that's the most powerful and beware that any companies, multinational companies, they are where they are afraid of one thing. That's you and me as consumers, not as a journalist. Journalists, journalism will disappear, um, but consumers will not. So my big aim is to give and continuing give the general public information about the chocolate industry. And through that information, people will think, and next time you go to the supermarket and buy chocolate, you might think, oh, is this chocolate made by child labor or a child slave? Um, And then would I then buy it? That's the mindset I want to create in people's minds. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to ask you the same thing about the consumer point of view. And uh, do you think that documentaries, news and spreading the world really affects the consumer? I'm really curious about that. I mean, is there any statistical uh, reports that show maybe uh, the consumer behavior changed according to uh, the knowledge uh, they have about child labor issues? Do we have anything Um... like this? That we can look no, I, at. I, I I think more and more information you get. You you if you go if you went to the street and asked yeah. a random person, okay, this is a chocolate bar. This is made by a child labor. Would you buy it? What do you think they would say? They oh, say oh yes. Me no, no, they yeah. wouldn't. They mm. wouldn't buy. So it's it's important to continuing telling people that this is made by child labor. That's important. That's the first step. Yeah. Secondly, what you need to be aware of is um, any companies, they're not evil or like stupid. So what they do is if the market change and the market can only be changed by the consumers. Yeah. Take, for instance, veganism. If you look at the past few years, it went from, oh, yeah, they're just like crazy people or lefties who um, who are hippies. Today, vegan food, or let's just call it plant-based food, is the biggest investment for any food company, Nestle, whatever, 
Why? Because people are sick and tired of meat. And why are they sick and tired of meat? Basically because of the climate change. So you have this movement of information and information can change people's mindset. And that's what I do. So hopefully in my lifetime, um, we will see changes. And we have seen from I began my first film to now, there has been a movement. So a lot of chocolate now are also uh, beans to bars chocolate, which is sustainable without any uh, child labor. So, so my information has helped a bit. I won't take the credit for anything, but I can see that it has changed in a better way, but we are way, way uh, behind the goals I'm looking for. Yeah, I, as long as we don't give up and as long as we talk about this and spread the uh, facts about the child labor and chocolate industry issue, I guess the the way the more the demand changes, the more the supply will change, I believe. So I think, uh, yeah, we 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 can be hopeful about that. We don't know maybe when will this happen exactly, but it will happen. It's happening in a way too, and it I will happen. I, I, yeah. I, think, I think it is happening as yeah. we speak. Yeah. Problem is, and I think until also the, what I really want to is, I want one of the big chocolate manufacturers to be leading this. Imagine if a company said, okay, why don't we take the lead? Now we want to listen to what Terry is saying. And now we will change. Let's hire him and say, okay, Terry, I have a good idea. Now you get all the money you will have to, to change this, change it for us. And then this company would be first movers. They will be front runners and people will love it. And then the whole industry will change in a minute. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, of course. It, of it, course. It, and, yeah, so it's, it's, it's all about that. It's same as but sustaining. at the moment, yeah. But at the moment, we have a system where all the big uh, chocolate makers, Mars, Mondelez, um, Nestle, they sit around the same uh, table at World Cocoa Foundation and agree things as an industry. I would love one of those walk out the room and say, "Hey, see you. I am taking lead on this." That's what we need, at least for the for all the children we have in the world who are suffering as we speak. They are working in, in, in hazardous work with pesticides, heavy loads, with machetes, and, um, and, and, and they don't go to school. They don't get paid for with their work. It's just devastating. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say that it's uh, it's like the thing you said was like sustainability because when people started to talk about sustainability, most of the companies started to have sustainability departments, and later on, the ones don't didn't have uh, started to lose lose credibility. So everybody started to talk about sustainability. I think uh, what what you said is really really true. If one company just steps out and leads the way, the others uh, hopefully will follow that company. So I hope that will happen and I hope they will watch our interview. <laughs> so uh, Miki, thank you so much. It was a really inspirational uh, interview for me. Thank you so much. And I hope we can reach uh, to a lot of people. Yes, me too. I, I genuinely hope um, that uh, more people would join this movement of changing uh, the chocolate industry so children are safe in school and not like unsafe in a in a uh, cocoa plantation yeah i hope to and thank you to everybody and to you who uh, contributes a lot to this uh, uh, the, to this situation to make it a better situation so i hope uh it won't it it will uh, give its fruits uh, in the following years. So thank you. Thank you so much again being for being here with us. Thank you for being part of it. Yeah. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.